have to push me around because I can't remember what everybody does. The intercession of Michael who stands at the right hand of the altar in a sense, may this in a sense be blessed by him in his honour it is to be blessed.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. My dear friends, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word, sacrament, and sacrifice, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against Thee through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For Thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve Thee in newness of life, to the glory of Thy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Lord, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenants between me and you, and I will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations, kings of peoples, shall come from her. Here ends the reading from the book of Genesis. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Abraham believed in the presence of the God who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were not written for his sake alone, but for also us. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciple, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? 
Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise be to you. Please be seated. May I speak to you in the name of the Father of love, the Son of grace, and the Spirit of loving wisdom. Amen. Two texts with which to open. First is from the Gospel reading we've just heard, verse 34 of the 8th chapter of Mark's Gospel. Anyone, Jesus said, if anyone wants to become my followers, Let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. And then the motto of the Society of the Holy Cross, which is based on Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is our salvation, our life, and our resurrection. Through him we are saved and made free. At that wonderful Anglican Catholic shrine of St. Mary's at Fuller Street in Kettering, church which I have known and loved since I was a boy, there is a magnificent rood screen, rather like the one here, with the usual figures of the crucified Christ, flanked by our Blessed Lady and St. John, the beloved disciple. And underneath a legend from the first letter of St. John, chapter 3, verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. And indeed, in the Christ on the cross, we do perceive the love of God. The cross, such a nasty, brutal, and obscene, form of execution. Small wonder then that so many folk can't or more perversely won't cope with it. Yet in the cross as in the mass is the heart and centre of the Christian faith. No one could ever say that they were induced to follow Jesus by false pretenses. Jesus never tried to bribe people by the offer of any easy way. He did not offer peace, but he did offer glory. To tell someone that they must be prepared to take up a cross was to tell them that they must be ready to be regarded as criminals and to die. Peter couldn't cope with the idea of Jesus being murdered But then, in fairness to him, he didn't know the end of the story like we do. Now I doubt very much that we shall be called upon to die for our faith. But one never knows in this age. As if each of us knows only too well, there are many crosses that we are called upon to bear. Last year in Lent, I met a young priest of the evangelical tradition who has three tough, very tough, and rough parishes near Kettering. And he, who said to me when I asked him how things were going, he said, David, they don't want to know about the cross. All they want are Easter bunnies, chocolates, lambs, and pretty flowers. Well, they're having the cross. I'm glad to say that he is still in post and doing very well. So a question, have we become so mollycoddled in our faith 
And have we let the sentimental twaddle of tinsely Christmases infect our whole faith life so that we can no longer bear the horror and terror of the events of Good Friday? I do hope not, and I imagine that if that were so, you would not be here this morning. But without the cross, our faith is faithless. T.S. Eliot wrote in his first quintet, which is called Burnt Norton, humankind cannot bear very much reality. Oh, right, he was. I would like to quote now from three people about the cross, two of whom you might not expect an uncompromising Anglican Catholic like me to even know about. But each has something to say very valuable about the cross. The first is from William Penn, the founder of modern Pennsylvania, in the United States of America. He had many heretical views and he was expelled from Oxford University in 1661 for attacking the church's doctrines of the Holy Trinity, the atonement and justification. And before he went to America, he was incarcerated in the Tower of London where he wrote a pamphlet entitled, No Cross, No Crown. And in it are these words, no cross, no crown, no pain, no palm, no thorns, no throne, no gall, no glory, no cross, no crown. He may not have been sound on the atonement, but he did know about the sacrifice of the cross. And my second quotation comes from Charles Haddon Spurgeon, a noted 19th century Baptist minister who died in 1892. On the day of his death, there was found on his desk a paper with these words, perhaps referring back to Penn. No cross, no crown, no loss, no gain. They too must suffer who would reign. Best can part with life without a sigh, whose daily living is to daily die. Youth pleads for age. Age pleads for rest. Who pleads for heaven will plead the best. And finally comes a prayer from Archdeacon George Briggs, late Archdeacon George Briggs, sometime a canon of Worcester Cathedral and the Archdeacon of, of Newala in central Tanganyika in the heyday of the university's mission to Central Africa. Holy Father, who has shown us that the brave bearing of the cross is the beginning of wearing thy crown, help us by your grace to bear patiently our pains and disappointments as thy beloved son bore his and to present them to thee as the pure gift of our faithfulness to our crucified Lord. Dear friends, do please try to walk the way of the cross with Jesus during these next few weeks. Without Good Friday and the cross, there can be no Easter day no resurrection. For all who call themselves Christians, the choice is stark, just as it was for Jesus. No cross, no crown. And your rood has not got the words of the rood of St Mary's Kettering, but hereby perceive we the love of God. We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is our salvation, our life and our resurrection. Through him we are saved and made free.
Amen. and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord Jesus, on the mountain top, you revealed your glory to the disciples. We pray for the church, for our parish, and for all Christian people, that as we see your glory in the Eucharist, so we may respond to your call to proclaim your name in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, on the mountain top, your clothes shone out with brilliant whiteness. We give thanks for the beauty of the world and for all created things. We pray for all who seek to protect the environment from pollution or exploitation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, on the mountain top, the disciples' hearts were filled with fear. We pray for those who are afraid, for victims of abuse or torture. 
for those anxious about money or debt, and for those locked into violent or abusive relationships. Cast out their fear with your perfect love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, on the mountain top you heard afresh your call to proclaim a kingdom of peace. We pray for the peace of the world and especially for the people of Syria, Iraq and the Holy Land and for all caught up in warfare or violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, on the mountain top the Father's voice was heard. We pray for all who suffer that they, like you, may be renewed in your love. We pray for Rosemary Foster, Charlie Taylor, Maisie Scarborough, Eleanor Moore, Derek Foster, David Wrigley, Barney Hughes, Susan Howe, Christopher Chu, Ron Jones, Elizabeth Cullum, Hill Boyfield, John Dixon, Dave Edsel, and John Winterbourne. And for all who's, whom we are sick, who are sick, whom we don't know. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, on the mountain top, you revealed your power over sin and death. We pray for the departed, that they may be saved by you to gaze forever upon your glory. We commend to God's care those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries of death fall about this time, namely John Mason, Peter Franks, Patrick Henry, Donald Williamson, priest, Roland Taylor, priest, Bonda Linskill, Barbara Davis, Frank Charles Patel, James Scott, Frieda Clough, Herbert Remington, Michael Wright, and Caroline McLean. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We implore Our Lady to join our prayers with hers as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, and, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. In, a moment, in a moment of silence, we lay our own cares and intentions before the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, have mercy on us. And here, these are prayers which we make in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name. We share his peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Be with you.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is sweet and right so to It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayers, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world, and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy, and join with saints and angels, forever praising you and singing. you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom 
all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, St. Michael, St. Martin, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you see we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I got it right this week. <laughs> Tuesday at half past seven, Stations of the Cross. Wednesday, there is no Mass. No Mass on Wednesday. And then on Friday, the usual Mass at noon. So no Mass on Wednesday, but Stations of the Cross on Tuesday evening at 7.30, 
and then on Friday the normal 12 noon Mass. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, with all who you love and all who love you, living and departed, now and for always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 